All right, welcome to the last um, full-fledged talk, the last one before the lightning talks. Um, we have this this topic, so we want to we want to talk about you how to supercharge your local beam community. And originally, this idea sparked from a talk between us because we are running the local user group in Hamburg um, that we should do a talk about that. And then I saw the couple papers of this conference, and I was just putting this stuff together, and then. As someone who goes to conference on a more regular basis, you tend to forget about it. And then I got this acceptance email. I was like, hey, Lydia, what are you doing in November? <laughs> kind of surprising. I think, like, oh, we're going to give a talk at a conference. Um, so, yeah, so now we're here. Um, the slides are still still warm. We crafted them yesterday. Um, but the talk, we prepared it pretty well. And uh, I hope you will take it at least a bit out of that. So, <coughs> my name is Ole Michaelis. Um, that's Lydia. Uh, again, we are from Hamburg. Uh, we brought a few more hamburgers here. So yeah, that's it, hamburgers. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, and you can find us on Twitter, which is probably the best way to reach us and tweet silly pictures of us doing silly dance moves. <laughs> Alright. Again, the true story. <laughs> Alright, so enough about us. Uh, what about you? Right. Who of you is running a user group? Running it. One hand. Two. Awesome. Of what? That's great. Really appreciate that. Who of you is attending user groups in your local cities? Awesome. It's almost everyone. That's great. It's really good to see. Um, and the one who's at the moment in the attending state, or maybe not in the attending state, because there is none, um, we hope we have something. Right? And even if, if, you're, um, if you're not at organizing, maybe we also have something for you, because you want to step up as an, as an organizer and improve your local users. So to start the story, um, I have to jump back to the beginning of 2015. It was in Seneski, Ohio. It was kind of warm-ish. We had uh, like two, two degrees Fahrenheit, which is for that area in that time pretty warm. And it was at Copenhagen, actually, a big conference in the US. Uh, it's really putting lots, so they have a lot of net there in the Midwest. And also, I saw a talk about Elixir. And this was the first time I saw or got in touch with that with that community, with that language. And it really hooked me up, so I decided that I want to learn it. So what I did was at the event, the, the following week, was jumping in at the Getting Started tutorial, and then learning it, basically, and walk, walk myself through it. But I would consider myself a user group, even back in Hamburg. So I decided that I do not want to do it like all on my own. I, I, I knew right from the beginning that I want to have a community to, to share my learning experience with, right? A community where I can go to when I have the silly questions on why can I do a loop, you know, all of this, this stuff. And talking about Hammer, there's really one, one confession I have to make and one, one thing I have to share. I don't know if, how many of you have been there, um, how many of you have been like into the tech community there, and I think the tech community in Hammer sucks, really. <laughs> there is almost, I know, there's almost nothing. Um, and the, the cool people we have, they tend to, to go for Berlin, right? They leave. <laughs> uh, or they leave for US, or they leave for San Francisco, and, and they leave for all the cool tech cities, and they do not tend to stay in Denver. Um And I want to change that. I love the city, my, my wife is there, my, my family is there, my little kid is there, and I don't want to leave, but I still want to live in a city which has a tech community, which has a vibrant tech community, right? I know I can't make Hamburg, San Francisco, just with the flip of my fingers, but at least I can make it a bit more vibrant, a bit more what I want what I want to be like. So I had the idea of finding, on founding, and creating the Elixir user group in Hamburg because we didn't have one. There was a Beam user group, a more general one, Julius back there, who you ran it, um, but they didn't have something going on for a few months at least, or maybe half a year. Um, I was like approaching him if, if we want to combine forces or revive it or whatever, and he did not answer in two days, and I'm, I'm so, I was so excited about this stuff that I just kicked it off and just did it. Uh, so I founded the Dixie User Group right away. Um, when founding means I created meetup, meetup.com. <laughs> that was like really the act of founding it. So, <coughs> sorry. So, I knew two things um, about the user group, and that was not, not much, but I knew that I don't want to make it like small conferences because I hate that, 
really a lot of people expect when they go to a user group that they have like a full-fledged agenda with conference style talks, you know, famous speakers, um, which present an awesome topic they have never heard of. And I don't want to, I, I don't like this. I think user groups should be something from users of the language, from the community, for the community, right? <coughs> it's not it's not a mini conference. We have conference. We have conference like this where we can do conference thing, but this is not a user group, right? And I think it's okay to distinguish. And the other thing I knew from, from experience I had like a year before that was I was attending the first Go meetup in Hamburg and they had around 100 people showing up. And the guy who was running it, he was a really nice guy, but he was not, you know, he was a programmer like us. He was not, he was not a vendor organizer or something. He didn't totally not like expect 100 people showing up. So what basically happened, it's like he was asking the, the round who's done some Go before and there were like three hands out of 100 people. And they said, oh, I show you some Go. And he went up to his laptop and opened up the, like, like the tutorial and he was program, programming in front of 100 people. Um, what happened is like after almost five minutes, he lost almost everyone. I dropped out after a minute because I did not have a laptop with me. And I don't know, I did not understand the thing. It was a horrible experience. And it, I think it's not his fault, but I saw the user group like after that, it took them like a half year or six, eight months to recover. <laughs> so the next meetups they had like five people, uh, which was probably the only one showing hands because they knew it. So Elixir is new and we will see a lot of people who have never done it before, but people who are passionate and who are interested in doing it. So we cannot do the typical things the Ruby user group does, for example, right? So when you show a new Ruby user group, it's it's known that everyone who is there knows all of it, right? Or at least like good bunch and maybe using it to work stuff. And this is not something we do not expect it for the Lixi user group. So these two ideas in mind, um, I knew that I cannot do it on my own um, because I'm proud of myself, you know. Uh, I'm also not good at organizing. I'm really bad at speaking in front of people, which is weird to now. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you get the point, right? It's, it's a different thing to organize a user group uh, than, than you would do in your daily job. So, luckily, I knew Lydia. Lydia is not a programmer. I think it's okay to say that. Uh, she's I'm a fun. <laughs> I'm fond of people. Yeah, she's an agile coach. And she knows people very well. And I think that's great. Um, and I thought we can make, like, this can be the multiplier for the user group, right? She can be the one who is like giving the user group the spin I wanted it to have. Uh, so I was pitching the idea to her and yeah. And for me it was totally different because the Agile community in Hamburg is really, really great. Um, it's kind of small so everyone knows each other. There are a lot of good people there. And you know the Agile people, they like to talk and they don't like to listen and sit there and have something up front. So it's always um, interactive. Um, so I had a lot of ideas and I said, yeah, sure, I'll help you. That's no problem at all, I would like to do that. So um, for him it was okay, let's get the next year thing starting and for me it's more like, yeah, I have so much ideas, I need some guinea pigs to prove it, to, to try something out. So it was a really good match. Um, so we started our first, um, our first session, our first meetup. And was, we, we didn't know what to expect. We had something like, oh my god, there will be 100 people showing up and you we have not enough food and not enough gear and ah, it will be horrible. And on the other hand, we thought maybe we are alone sitting there. We go in a big room. So, um, so we created something or uh, tried to find a method that will work with every, um, every amount of people. And in the end, there were something around 30 people showing up for the first one. And we had a, a lot of newbies, never heard about it, maybe Googled uh, next year first. And um, some people who really worked with it already. And it was a really nice, um, nice mix up from, from, from knowledge. Um, and what we did, we asked people what they expect of, the, of this uh, meetup. Why did they come? What would they like to, to know? And um, it was a, um, some said, yeah, we would really like to have this kind of, you know, upfront entertainment. Um, and we're still doing this. It's mostly um, studying and moderating stuff that's really entertaining, I hope. And, um, but we also have this interactive part. And um, we had a lot of big back for that. And uh, we'd like to show you some of the methods we use, some of the ideas. The first one 
um, we do cutters. Maybe you know it, it's small um, exercises that are um, really, I would not say easy to, to solve, but they're not totally complex and it's not real, real stuff to do. And um, the main idea here is that um, there are people who can teach and maybe improve their teaching skills. And on the other hand, there are a lot of people who like to learn. And uh, this is a great opportunity for them to really get into it. It's also life hacking, so we always have small groups of two or three people sitting around on a laptop and really hacking stuff. And what we never saw so far is someone sitting in a corner and doing nothing or just watching. It's really, it's really great to see that all the people are evolving into this. Yeah, so we do it in a, in a uh, like the preparation of this is a bit, is a bit more than doing, um, you know, a regular user group where you're not giving a talk. Uh, so what we are doing is we are preparing a, a good bunch already. So we do not only have the problem, but due to the fact that we have a lot of beginners, as I mentioned, we have the whole um, scaffold set up. So we don't expect the attendees to do all the mixed new and write tests and stuff. So they have a repository, and one cutter is one repository in our GitHub organization. Um, we will talk about the GitHub organization if we do all of this later. But there's one repo per cutter, and the people can just clone it, and then they have a running setup ready, so they just have to do mix test get and compile, and then they can run the tests. And the tests are obviously failing, and we even have we even provide an empty functionality most of the time. So uh, you know it's not like the compiler's not <coughs> But the tests are obviously failing. So this is uh, what we had the attendees. Then the person who created the cutter, <coughs> um, everyone, so it's not only me, everyone is asked to submit something. Um, we have an issue in the, the repository where we can just like, submit a cutter. And then there's a like, little review thing. And then you can totally run your, your cutter in a way. Um, and then what we do for, for reviewing, after everyone worked on it in groups, what we do for review is we ask people to submit a pull request because this is something everyone knows, right? There's not, there's not something new to them. It's, it's like a regular workflow that you, they, they know already. So we don't ask them to learn something new for, for dealing with the cutter and the presenter. So they open up a pull request and then we have one laptop prepared to browse all of the pull requests in GitHub because the GitHub code editor and the code review tool in GitHub is quite sufficient to review cutter results. And here's a little trick. So I can really encourage you to have continuous integration in place because the pull requests turn red or green depending if the solution is, is right or wrong, right? This is really cool to see. So you can ex execute the code and see if people like were successful without having them plug in their own laptop, having their own code like in, in their terminal and, and all this weird stuff. But it's something which has the same interface. And yeah, this worked out pretty well. <coughs> also, we invite all everyone who submitted a pull request to walk up stage and run it through their solution. Another thing we have is bring your own problem. Do you want to start with that? Uh, yeah. So um, I was inspired from Intellivision. That's a method used from social workers, um, like kindergarten teachers or um, yeah, social workers. And um, it's a method where, where they can ask questions and solve um, or get input from the others um, in their group, in their peer group, um, to get ideas of how to improve and how to solve problems. And we used this method and we changed it a little bit, so Stephen Tweak is totally what we did here. And um, what we do is someone um, has a problem or is stuck in the code or whatever is not happy with, with the outcome. And, um, She's presenting their, their stuff. Um, the group can ask questions to understand what's going on. And in the end, the, the audience is turning around to groups of three or four people and discussing their, um, their angle, their solutions, their maybe questions or what's all. And um, yeah, so after eight, ten minutes, um, they have maybe an idea or an advice. And then they turn around again and uh, give their advice to the person with the question, and in the end, that's, that's very important, um, the one with the question has said, okay, I really like to try this, or I like to use this when I'm home, I really, I really like to work with that. Um, so the people who give feedback, get feedback for their feedback, and you know, I'm a manager coach, so I like feedback a lot, and this is something that's really, really awesome that you get to know how this, how this will work, and how the others receive their, your input. 
I think this is a format which is really received well um, because if you're like coding a lot in, in Elixir or Erlang or if you're coding a lot in whatever language, um, you're facing a lot of you know the smaller issues, not like how I'm how I'm making a lot of money out of code, but more like how do I structure it? How do I handle the code flow in this particular case? And this is something where bringing your own problem really adds a lot of benefit because you have this five to ten minutes to present it to the group of like-minded people and then you can just run down the problem and get some fresh ideas and what I really like about the format as someone who presents a problem you're not you're not committing to a certain solution you hear right you just get the input and then well thanks and that's it right you don't have to say you don't have to commit to something and do it in a particular way maybe you can just walk away and just well, I still do it my way. <laughs> and then there's another thing where, which I really want to emphasize is if you're doing this and you know promise a lot to argue, right? If I just bring up Wim versus Emix, we could spend the whole like night with that question. Um, it's really have it's it's important, not only necessary, that you have someone like Lydia in place. So you really need a moderator. You want someone to stop the talk people talking. <laughs> You know, there's always, you always have, in every group, you always have the loud one, the ones with their strong opinion, who wants their opinion on everyone, right? So it's really important that they get stopped and that it, the, the more quiet people also get a voice. And if you're not having access to a professional, like we luckily have, um, get, like, do it, do it yourself and get a little bit better at this because I think this is super important. And if you let a format like this just run, the experience is really bad, right? So this really stands and falls with moderation. It also has a nice um, nice way of involving everyone, so if you're a little bit shy or you're not that experienced in the language, um, you can talk to three or four people and that's maybe easier than talking in front of 20. Um, so it's really, really great to step into it and get an experience out of it. Another form of use is um, our own source together project. And uh, to be honest, we're a little bit We'll lie a little bit here because it will be next week. Um, so we hope that this will be awesome. So we did not do it yet. But, but we planned it all. So to, to, we, maybe we can tell you right away. So <laughs> I just take you. It's all planned. It's, it's all there. <laughs> Seriously. Um, the idea is um, to, to really do stuff and really work on live code. Um, give something back to the community. It's an open source project. So maybe you're using it and then we can contribute to it. Um, Helping the people getting over this, you know, this, this formula, you take the step and say, okay, I'm really doing, I'm maybe not that good, but I can commit something, I can help them a little bit, um, and doing it all together. Yeah, so what we do is we invite a popular open source maintainer. So, for example, next week we um, have René Fleuring, he's doing this Credo library, uh, which is a minting tool, pretty well known in Elixir, and he brings this project like into the user group and he starts with a little introduction like how this tool works how it's maybe designed and what certain design decisions are how the code is organized all of this stuff and then the maintainer also brings a special label just for the user group so it's handbook ex which is the shotgun of a user group which is a special beginner just for this a special beginner label just for this event so it should be something which can be solved within half an hour and it is something really easy for the start, right? It might be re renaming the method or um, adding an argument somewhere, this kind of stuff. You know, it's not totally like changing the software architecture or something. This is not what this special labels are about. Um, and then with this beginner labels, we hope that we can help people to get their feet wet on a certain project, and especially with the maintainer in hand. When there are questions about the, the whole project, they can approach the maintainer directly. And this is not only cool for us because it gets your feed word with a popular open source library, which is I think a cool thing itself, but also helps the maintainer because it's like a recruitment thing for new maintainers to the open source libraries, right? Um, and again, we did not do it yet, but uh, find me next week after Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, and then I can tell you if it works or not. Or if you're interested, uh, you just drive over from Hamburg and, and join us at Xing. Um, this is one of the biggest meetups we have organized yet, which sounds like 300 people. Uh, so, so we have 30 um, set of demonstrations now, uh, which was after the very first one, the biggest um, 
in numbers we have planned yet. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this. I think this is really going to be fun. And uh, yeah, it's really, again, doing, it's, it's something against the rules, right? It's not a regular user group thing. And this is why I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to that. And then we have another format. It's kind of an obvious thing. It's September's. So obviously in July, <laughs> uh, Lydia and I, we were uh, talking about the user group over a beer and we had the idea that we want to do something which is not getting to a company, getting laptops out, you know, coding, but emphasize the social aspect of it a bit more. And we figured that we, we were at the July meetup. In August, we were both out of country. Then in September, because we're in Hamburg, it might probably be too cold to do a barbecue already. That can also be true for July. Yeah. The, <laughs> well, all the year, <laughs> except May. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we decided to just go eat burgers. I think that's a very, very common thing for, for nerds, even though it's a bit cliche. Um, but yeah, they even had, probably they had some, some whatever. <laughs> um, <Awesome. yeah. laughs> I think, I think it was a really cool thing. So it was about to have fun together, you know, get, get out, get off, get out of your comfort zone, get out of my, maybe talk about coding. I mean, we talk about coding a lot at the event, but. <laughs> um, we, we, we broke the, the scenery, right? Um, and then we just leave it open uh, again to the, to the attendees to do whatever. And what I think was interesting that um, there were a few new people. I thought when we were organizing this, only the people who come to every meetup will show up. But we had at this special meetup, we had three newcomers. I think that's great as well. Uh, they might have a pretty, pretty weird impression of the group. <laughs> so but that's, that's true. Yeah. That's weird. Um, <laughs> That's a weird group. Well, <laughs> oh, good, good, good question. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what we did is we organized this um, uh, via meetup, so we do all the stuff via meetup. And um, there's a functionality where you can um, uh, earn money with it, so uh, you can spend five. We, we decided to get five euros from everyone as a kind of please show up fee. Um, so if you spend the five euros and come to the meetup, you will get the five euros back. Um, so that we have the, the real number to book a table, uh, that's very important because normally you have 20 people on the meetups uh, page, but only 10, 10 are there. And if it's only five, it's maybe bad for the, for the venue, for the restaurant. Um, yeah, so in the end, it's, it, it, it had to make a little bit minus because um, obviously the meetup needs some, some money and they, they, they earn money with that. And um, yeah, but our idea was first, okay, we can, we can pay with the five euros the first beer or the first round of, of drinks. And then we thought, okay, that can be kind of horrible with the numbers because then everyone's paying half of it and we're paying the other part. So we decided to give five euros, five euro bills back. Um, so everyone was there and then they get here, it's for five euro. Thank you, thank you for joining me. Have a fun. They work out pretty well in the end. Um, so what is important, like if you, if you plan something like this, there's a little, little bit more planning involved. So the third thing I, I want to emphasize is like book a table, as in really book a table, not just pretending you book the table and saying you might have called someone. We had a table. Like book a table, like actually calling them and, and organize the table at a certain place, at a certain point in time. I mean. <laughs> Well, it worked out in the end. It, it turned out that the, that the actual venue do, do not take reservations, but they were like, yeah, it will be fine, just show up. <laughs> Which drove me nuts a bit, so I was pretty nervous about it. I uh, think it would have all the people in the world. Yeah, yeah, it worked out pretty well, so I don't want to complain about that. Uh, but if you want to sleep better the night before, or have a better day before the meetup, uh, just like, you know, go to a venue where you can really book a table, like in, in actual terms. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what I think is also pretty helpful is if you want to give the 5 euro bills back, um, take as an organizer, first get a lot of 5 euro bills, <laughs> but your bank will help you with that, that was not a big issue. And then also bring an attendee list with pictures, right? Because there's so many people, especially sometimes newcomers, even though with pictures it's sometimes hard because people have everything, like literally everything as their avatar, <laughs> but it helped at least for 60% of the attendees to figure out who, who, who is who and, and just cross it off in the list. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
you can also limit at Meta for uh, numbers of attendees. Uh, if this is a concern for you, but for our group, it's so 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 small. And then yeah, um, PayPal actually charges a little fee, so we are lucky that Arve did not show up. <laughs> and we had yeah, <laughs> we had one person not showing up, and uh, this basically covered the fee, so we ran out on zero on that. That's pretty nice, and it's just one person out of around 15, I guess. So we have to find another method to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very not user groups. <laughs> So uh, next, next, the next one is really dubious. It's about beer, so it's mine. True story. Um, we always, or if you if attend meetups, um, they have this beer alcohol thingy in the end. So normally you get from the from the menu from the company that hosted the, the event. They also sponsor the beer, and um, normally it's in the end. So you have your two talks and maybe a little break in between, and after that. All the family persons have to go home, and we didn't like that, so uh, we skip the, the last part and move it to the middle. So we have first our first action, maybe small talk or um, the first cut or whatsoever. Then we have a really big break in the middle where all the socializing happens and the beer making and um, get to know each other and drinking alcohol and whatever you like. And after that, we have the second part. And uh, yeah, it's really nice to create this kind of community feeling and to get to know each other uh, better. That's cool. Yeah, also important to offer something non alcoholic, right? Not only beer. <laughs> to provide water. This is something really just popped into my mind. So many companies do not provide water. This is such a basic thing, right? They all have, all have Coke and Fritz and I don't know where it is. Yeah, Mate. Um, but when I had already five Club at the company, I work for, you know, I don't want to have... Six. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> you will not stop talking. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to listen to yourself. <coughs> Alright, so the last thing we want to we want to talk about, the last um, action we have, or we did already, is something we call Show Your Legs Production Hub. We just did it once, but I think it's very, it, it was very interesting. So in Hamburg, as it's... We did it twice. Yeah. We did One it twice. Of them <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have two companies doing it, right? Yeah. So yeah. So we, we, we have them Yeah, we have them So we have two companies actually having a bigger Elixir production thing. And due to the fact that Elixir is not a regular a regular a regular language and a regular wow. like framework, um, the use cases and the apps people write are mostly more interesting than, oh, I created an e-commerce site, or oh, I created another CMS site. Um, so the apps they build and the problems they solve are mostly more interesting. So there was an opportunity for them to, to show what they what they are building, right? And also there was a lot of questions around, that often the, the problem way, like, oh, um, I don't know, why is your traffic shaping this form or whatever. Um, so it was, it was really interesting to, to, see, to see a lot of, of that. And because we have a lot of awesome people, they get a big applause at the end. So if you'd like to have your little, you know, um, watch time, so to get a warm and fuzzy feeling, it's great to, to join and get applause. So that are the formats we did in the past, but we, as I mentioned, we have a lot of ideas and a big list and backlog of things we'd like to do in the future, and uh, so next year. And uh, one of this is um, doing some projects together. Um, it's like. Yeah. Our idea is to make a little bit more than a cutter, so it should not be done in the end of the meetup. It's like a kickoff for something that we can work on together in the, in the rest of the month and maybe come together in the next meetup and show what, what happened in, in the, uh, with the project. Yeah. So the, 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 the point where this originated from is uh, there's a project called Continuum, which I always pronounce in the wrong way. Which is an um, AI game, basically, where you're programming an AI for, for a game, which is very nicely visualized on the website. And I wrote at the weekend project the Lixer adapter for it. And then some people from the user group saw me tweeting about it and said, well, we can do this in the user group. I said, yeah, this could work, this could be interesting. But then, you know, writing a, a good AI takes more than, than you would, more time than you have in regular media, right? So the idea is that we kick off something where we write something very basic at the meetup, something which is, I don't know, running back and forth. You know, very, very simple. 
but to get everyone started in the, in the environment of this and maybe even give the people an, an idea about um, what's important when you write when you write an AI and then have like one month one, one month passing and then after one month at the next meetup we show up and gather again and then show results this kind of project so longer terms um, longer term things we could also think of um, doing something open source together not in um, helping something existing out but maybe creating something so if you know Seattle RB, they have a lot of, in the Ruby community, they provide a lot of open source tooling, right? And they have it in their user group umbrella. And this is something I could see with um, HamoGX as well. But this is not something we have yet with this. If there's someone like, like coming up with this idea, I'm totally happy to, to support it. Another idea we have is um, something called mob programming. Mm -hmm. um, it's the it's the bigger pair programming. I mean, pair programming is with, with two people, and more programming is with a, a group of people sitting in front of them. With everyone. With everyone. And um, yeah, so here the main idea is to really talk together, work together on something, and maybe give the idea of what more programming can be uh, to the people so that they can take it and use it in their day job. And that's, again, an agile coach, so I like something like this that creates more connection and more communication. Um, so, again, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, I think this could be pretty interesting to create a space for people to try something out. They might be not allowed to try that in the workplace, right? Then when they try it in the user group, they might walk back up to the, to the bosses and say, hey, we tried this, it worked out really well, we want to do it. And like, sharing and pitching something you have done is a totally different pitch than something you just heard about, right? So we have the idea of giving the space on, on doing it in a user group because we have, you know, we have the location, we have the people, and uh, you just have to bring the pro the project that we need. And we have the freedom to do whatever we like. Yeah, sure. It's after work. <laughs> That's <laughs> negative one. I don't know. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> All right. Well, however. I think, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, I wanted to talk about a little bit on, on how we are running the user group. When we were creating it, or when I was thinking about the user group or doing the user group, I know that I don't want to be a one-man show. I knew that it's not, I don't want to be the analytics guy. Maybe I am now, especially now giving a talk about it, but it's, it's not me. I don't want it to be only me. <coughs> I want it to be uh, the big community. So, in order to achieve that, what well, the first thing we did, and we even did it first before we had the first meetup, we do everything in public. There's nothing happening between uh, behind closed doors. So everything we do, everything we discuss, and everything we decide, we do it in public on GitHub. Here you see the planning issue we did for this for this month meetup. Um, as you can see, we do everything in there. So we discuss the menu. For example, if you you can drag people in, right? It's GitHub. So when there's the, like, like in the Vemo one, we do it in Xing, and the people of Xing that on GitHub, so I can just mention them and drag them in and check if they have the venue for this one. So I can just drag the other people in. I can drag uh, our guests in, right? I can, can drag everyone in and make the decision there and also do my status rights there. So I'm still, maybe I, it's on my hat doing it, right, and organizing it, but everyone can jump in. If you have an idea, you can just go on GitHub now and submit something. Everyone can join the discussion. And you not only can commit your, your company to host it as a venue, but we also have a big backlog, and again, and I coach, you know, boards. Um, we have a big backlog with the board to organize the, uh, the talks or the methods we like to do. And here, for example, that's our um, all the talks that we have, where someone had an idea to do something, and when we organize it, we can go through the list and can say, okay, how far are you? Is it possible for you to, to start it? And connected with the or connect, right? connect, connect. Um, connected with the with the meetup, and then bam, everyone knows what's going on, who's in, who's out, and uh, yeah, if there should be a bus we're sitting in and it's going down, someone else can jump in and just yeah. take it over. And it's a really, uh, we encourage this, and we tell it on almost every meetup that that people can participate in this, and then we really want people to jump. in. Because it creates, still creates a kind of hurdle, and we do not see like everyone jumping in. Um, but it's good to see that we have people jumping in. And it's not us. We have a group of I don't know a handful of people who are like participating in this on a regular basis. 
again due to the fact that um, I do I don't want to have much work with, with doing it. We have everything in templates, so everything looks the same, which is not too bad, I guess. So the issues we have, the issues we plan, the monthly issues, there's a template for that. So when I, when I have a run, I just create like 10 of them in a, in a run, and they all follow the same steps, like having a checklist of things to do. And all of this is, again, in GitHub, in code. So if you have, a, if you have an idea of improvement, or if you want to see something be done differently, you can just open up a pull request on the way of how we organize things. And I think that's, this is pretty neat as well. Um, we also have this templates for meetup.com, so how to how to set the settings in meetup.com so that everyone can do it. It's not just me because I did it like 12 times, but everyone can do it. I hope that I describe most checkboxes to be clicked in, in the in the template. I also have um, the template for you know you have to fill out the description, what times you have to set, um, how you can select the venue. All of this is done in code. Right. And again, it's all public. So if you want to write, uh, if you want to run something, or if you want to get inspired, or if you want to do a similar thing, um, just clone you. <laughs> right, you can do it. Fork it. Yeah, fork it. Please. Uh, absolutely encouraged. Uh, we also have, or will have, the, the methods uh, description of how I've operated. So um, if you'd like to take it over and steal and tweak it and use it on your own, please do that. And if you have a question, uh, tweet us so we can help you. Um, please do. Yeah, open navigation. So um, if, there's, if there's something or you have a question um, on how we run it, there's also the, the, we have this planning repo, and unfortunately it's not linked somewhere, but it's um, HAPX H -A um, slash planning. Um, you can just go there and opening and filing up the uh, issue for that. I also want to talk a little bit about platforms. So one is that we use GitHub, but GitHub is only for organizers or people who are interested in organizing or want to contribute to it. If you want to attend, if it, this is like if this is what you want to do and you're not wanting to plan, this is totally fine for us. And there's no need for you to jump in GitHub. Right? Just go to meetup.com, sign up there, join our group, and you will get the, all the information you need for proof, for attending, you will, you will get them. And why we choose meetup.com is pretty easy, because I think they do one thing pretty well, which is email marketing. Right, so they send a lot of emails, and I know this can be annoying, but in order to grow the user group, this is pretty helpful for us. So I just create a meetup, and then they send out an email to everyone, to all the attendees, so everyone could be interested in joining us and inviting them. This is not something you have to do myself, I just click a button. Right, this is really easy. This is why I enjoy this a lot. When people like join meetup.com and they say they live in Hamburg or they move to Hamburg, they get our meetups and groups suggested because maybe they were um, also part of the Berlin chapter. I think this helps a lot. And what we also do is Twitter, and in this place I want to do a big shout out to Julius, he's in the back. Uh, he's running the Twitter account. I uh, really appreciate that because we don't, like, I don't know, I don't have time for that. I have like tens of others. I, I refer very regularly to read on them. What we really try to do is, and I think we, we achieve at, at least that, um, we have one announcement tweet per, per issue. Um, and this is something we, we uh, mention between two quite often. So. We are not very good at taking pictures, so there are not so many pictures from the user group itself. So if you ever join a Hamburg user group, please take pictures. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we have, I think uh, we have five pictures at all. But again, so the, the, the regular number of people we have is somewhere between 10, 10 and 15. Um, so it's not, you know, not the JavaScript. It's just not right. So talking about achievements, right? What, what did we achieve in the user group? So first of all, talking about achievements, there's no one handing you a trophy. That's not going to happen, right? This, it is not the most rewarding work on earth. Um, but I think it is fairly rewarding. And it, it, it does a bit to the, to the community, it does its bit to, to make the, the language community better at a whole. And it helps, as I mentioned at the beginning, to grow your local community and to make your local tech scene better. What we also achieve is, and this is again my topic, <coughs> maybe we get into it. Um, we created the first uh, Elixir cocktail. Um, it was uh, one of the summer, uh, the summer meetups, and um, yeah, everyone had, had to get drunk because I was practicing my. Elixir. And Yuri's is blaming him today, still uh, to today, so. 
And um, yeah, it was a really nice session. We had a lot of uh, try and error here, so to create, to get really the right color. Um, but it's really, really tasty. So uh, also, again, this is on GitHub, so if you have your your next party meetup or whatsoever, um, it's tasty, it has alcohol in it. And um, yeah, really nice. And one of the five pictures. <laughs> Six pictures. <laughs> and what we what we also achieve, and that's something that um, gives me, uh, I'm, I'm proud of this, um, to connect people. That's part of my job and uh, my day job. Um, we saw some job switches, and um, the connection was on. What? What's um, And they they connected on the on our user group. So um, it was really really nice to see that someone is. You know, getting into a new position, getting new challenges, and being happy at work again. It's my, my life dream, making people happy at work. And um, to see that happens here, it's really, really nice. Warm, yeah. fuzzy feeling. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's very <laughs> obvious, right? So there are, I don't know, two, three companies in Hamburg running in the Elixir project and, and being in the need of Elixir developers. So where should they go if not to our meetup, right? And then what they will have at the meetup is people who are passionate about language. I mean, what a perfect match, right? Um, and then for more, we have, while doing it, we have more links, right? If we get people who are passionate and interested in the language, like more excited about the language, or maybe even the platform, um, they will, they will go back to the bosses and they will go back to the work, and maybe the next project they start, it will be an elixir because they learn that much and they, they got more excited at our user group. And thus, we create more workplaces using the language, and thus we're creating more jobs in elixir, and thus we get generating more elixir developers. Um, if you go on talking, there's in the five minutes we take over the world. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> totally, totally the plan. <laughs> Make elixir great again. <laughs> totally. Totally our goal. We need hats. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So this brings us back to you, Greg. <clears throat> we we did this thing for for a year now, um, or almost a year. So we started in February. Um, I started it, as I mentioned, uh, organizing it or thinking about it in January. So it's almost a year now. Um, I think we have our eleventh edition. Yeah, eleventh yeah, edition um, this this week, next week, in a few days. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't want to be this about us, right? I want to be this about you, and I want you to supercharge your local BIM community, so I want you to improve your local community. And care for your organizations and for, your, for the organizers and for the events. We want you to build a local community using the tools you already know, like GitHub and the flows. And if you want to move it, move it, baby. So just do it. It's really, really easy. That's the only thing to do. That's all we got. Thank you very much. And then this is a topic where we might have a few questions. So if you have any questions, we're happy to take them now. Or again, always. You mentioned coding katas, right? Yeah. Uh, my experience with uh, coding katas was we got some developer, uh, some people that had zero, ex zero experience in developing. Do, do you get those people in the Elixir group? And if yes, how do you manage to teach them like a functional language? Um, I can answer that because I'm one of them. Um, <laughs> and what I did, I, I, I asked, I said, I don't know anything who likes to teach me a little bit. And uh, it was a very interesting experience because there was someone who said, OK, I will try to explain it to you in a really, really low level. <laughs> Um, so we learn to teach, and I really get get answers, and I really get something out of it. Um, I'm totally not able to do it now yet, but um, it was a starting point, and to figure out someone who really can help me, that was awesome. And we, in the end, we had green tests, but we cheated a lot. <laughs> um, they actually returned the number. Sure. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, 
yeah, but it was really so, so the first the first um, impression was there. And um, what we do is we ask, okay, who is who's experienced, who's already working with it, and um, then ask the people who are not experienced and go to the pure person who, who raised their hand in the first question and to pair them up. So that, that's really great. So it's again about yeah. mixing uh, mixing the, the people more together, right? It's a bit just don't throw the quest, don't throw the task at the people and then leave them like that or leave them with the, with the task open. It's really encourage them to, to start it and encourage them to mix up because this is really something people have, <coughs> they have a lot of barrier on this. And this is also something I did not mention. Um, always, at least the people who created the kata should run around the room and help people. Um, especially as with Elixir, we have a new language, we have a lot of Concepts new to a lot of people, and like recursion is probably the question we get the most, right? It's oh, I, I have this two elements in my list. How do I do it without loops? Um, so this is probably the thing we explain the most. Um, and yeah, we just we have the experience people wandering around and helping. It really helps too that the uh, cars are there in advance, like if you days or sometimes weeks. So if you put them on GitHub and if you already linked them in your GitHub page, then those people will look into maybe try it and fail horribly, but at least they know at what point uh, they fail so they can break this. So they, so many people are not even unprepared, right? They are slightly yeah. misprepared, but they at least have tried. Yeah. So that also just put it up in advance. And what's always there is you have the solutions online on GitHub. So if you're not, if you cannot attend, you can make them at home. Uh, it should take so much time you need, and then compare the answers. And maybe <coughs> come the next month and, and show your answer and get feedback to, to your thing. Um, so that's the advantage of GitHub. This is also something we saw, like, which really surprised me. We had a lot of people who took the cutter afterwards. There was even a lot of people who submitted an issue like, oh, can, can you uh, explain the result in pull request something company? Um, because I did it on, uh, at home and uh, I had the following question. And this kind of stuff, so people really look at this and do it. So if you, if, you're, if you are interested in that, again, you can just check out our repo. We have about five cutters um, and about three of them we did already. And you can also check out the solution. Yeah. So when we were trying to develop a group, doing like workshop style meetups. What we, we faced with that the people were changing, the people that were coming to, to the, to the meetups. So on the first workshop we did something, and on the second one we got people who were again new completely to the to, to, to here. And then on the next one we got again new people that were completely new. And it was hard to, to find like a common ground for everybody to follow. So, you maybe have some... So we switch a lot. I think uh, the, the, biggest, the biggest difference we do there is that there's, again, we did 11 editions now and we did three times a cutter, right? So it's not that we repeat a lot. We have, also we have a lot of talks. This might be not that clear in this, in this talk, but um, we usually have one talk as an, as an action filler, as, as a something. At a meetup, so we usually have one talk on something else, right? And then the one something else is a kata. It could be bringing a problem, all this kind of different stuff. And like, and I can only speak for the Hamburg edition. We what we see is that we also do get a lot of new people, um, and especially the, the new ones might know might not know show up again or might not show up uh, that frequently. But we also have we have a core. We have a core set of people at around I don't know eight or ten. And you usually see them every time. And on the other hand, I mean, we created it to, to involve new people and to get in contact with new people who didn't know anything. Um, so, not complaining about it is kind of the opposite of what we, what we intend to do. So, we really try to, to take them with us and, and help them from the, or take them where they stand in the moment and bring them one or two steps further. No, I'm definitely not complaining, but just wondering yeah, how, I, how I, best I can accommodate them. Uh, have you identified some, what are the, the, the rough parts of Elixir when you're introducing new people, when they're learning, or wh which are the parts that you see that people get stuck, or have problems, or complain that it's hard, or weird? Recursion. Or some, because that's, yeah, I think that's the hardest, <laughs> the hardest part for all, of, for all of the newcomers who come to our... So w when they try to set up the, the tooling, or the editors, or... Well, this is something we did for them already, right? 
Okay. So we have all the, the project scaffold, we have running tests. So all they have to bring is running Elixir compiler. And nowadays, when like most people run the Mac, it's Prove install Elixir, and they have everything set up. <coughs> uh, so I would say it's a recursion from the programming point of view. Um, I can't even think of the, the next biggest thing. Uh, because it varies a lot, right? And it also depends on the kata. I mean, we had some binary katas. Um, and yeah, due to the way how the Elixir and the line handles binaries, uh, almost everyone who has not experienced with this particular problem um, domain had like an issue or had a rough time of starting the game with that. So, do you document your experiences? Or uh, if someone is to learn from uh, what you've been through, is like uh, through the, uh, the best place to go is GitHub? Um, yeah, so um, we document what we do and how we do it, so that you can take it as a, um, as a recipe and use it on your own. Um, we didn't have any feedback, so we have done somewhere. No, not yet. Uh, not yet, but it's an interesting idea. Maybe we should do that, take some, some statements from the, from the crowd. And put it in there, yeah. Interesting idea.